Welcome to A-Frame Lesson 1.2. In this lesson, we're going to cover the various components that you can add to your virtual reality world from A-Frame, as well as three important attributes, which are the position, rotation, and dimensions. So let's get to it. So heading over to the A-Frame website, uh, and then going to the Get Started, and scrolling down a little bit on the left side, uh, you'll see something called primitives. These are the various A-frame components that can be added to your virtual world. And we already saw three of them in the previous videos, which were the, the box, the sphere, and also the cylinder. Uh, where's the cylinder right here? But as you can see, as I was scrolling up and down, there's a, a whole slew of different primitives, such as cones, um, very sophisticated shapes, dodecahedron, uh, images, light sources. Again, these you will uh, explore throughout the various videos and on your own independent exploration. So let's go over to Replit and now let's talk about attributes. So when you pull up the default template for A-Frame, uh, you'll see that it comes with a box, a sphere, and a cylinder, as well as a plane in the sky. Each of these has a additional attributes that let you kind of modify uh, things about that particular component. So let's talk about the position first. So because it's a 3D world, uh, it should not come as a surprise that it has three different values for positions, the X, the Y, and the Z. Let's talk about the Z right now. So we see that the Z is at a negative one position. And if you're curious about the units uh, that are being used, this is measured in meters inside of the virtual reality world. So because this is at a negative one, you'll see that the box is slightly to the left of the sphere, which is at a position of zero. And you'll notice that the cylinder is a little bit uh, to the right of the sphere because that's a position of one. So if we wanted to move the box further to the left, that means we want to go further in, in the negative x direction. So let's put it to negative 2. And you can see here that the sphere moved this way. And if we wanted to move the cylinder the other way, we could push it uh, more positive in the x direction. So that should seem comfortable. Uh, let's look at the box now. Uh, let's look at the next dimension, or the next position, which is the y position. So the box is at 0.5. So let's push this up to like 3.5. And you'll notice that the sphere is at 1.2, the cylinder is at 0.75. So 3.5 should really bring the box uh, up a lot. And it does. And if you kind of look around in the world, uh, you know, taking different approaches, get a little closer here, <laughs> you know, we can look at the box from underneath because it really is above the sphere and the cylinder. So I'm going to back out. Now, for frame of reference, um, we'll see that, let me run this again so it goes back in position. We have a plane here, and the plane's at 0, 0, an x of 0, a y of 0. So if I make the box a negative, let's say, 2.5, that should bring the box below the plane, which is at a y of 0. And if I back out a little bit, and if you look down, you'll see that the box is underneath the plane. So again, the X and Y uh, position should not come as a surprise. The Z one uh, is one that, let me bring the box back up. The Z one is one that might take a little practice getting used to because it's the idea of going into the world and out of the world. So you'll see that the box is at a negative three the sphere is at a negative 5, and the cylinder is at a negative 3. So if I wanted to push the sphere further back into the world, that means I wanted to go further back in the z direction. So to go further into the world, that means you're decreasing the z, which by default means that if you're coming closer into the world, so I'm going to put this at a point 0.1, um, actually, you might not see that. Let me bring it back just a little bit. Let's say 0.0. Okay, so you can see the sphere is pretty much right in front of us. Uh, and if I back out of the world a little bit and then take it from an angle, you'll see that the sphere is now in front 
of the box as well as the cylinder. Now another thing that it's important to mention and we saw that when we put it at negative one, I'm actually going to put it at zero. You start off at position zero which is why we don't see uh, the ball but if we do back up we'll see the balls there. So if you don't give an object a position, it assumes the positions of 0, 0, 0, uh, dead center of the world. So just remember that when you don't see an object, it might be not because it's not there, because it might not be in your view. So you may have to move around the world a little bit. So hopefully you get a sense of uh, positioning from X, Y, and Z. Remembering uh, X and Y is pretty much like what you might deal with in a math class, which is up and down and left and right. The negative, though, I'm going to put this back at negative 5. Uh, the Z, negative means to go into the world. Positive means to have it come out towards you, uh, away from the world. Now let's talk about rotation. And we'll see that the box has a rotation. The sphere <laughs> doesn't make sense to have a rotation because, again, it's a sphere. So I'm going to focus on just the box for rotation. Now notice there's three values, similar. It's a rotation in the x-axis, y-axis, and the z-axis. For this, I'm gonna go over to my presentation because it might be easier for us to envision what does it mean to rotate on the x-axis. So if you imagine a pole going through your object on the x-axis and then you twisting that pole, you kind of imagine the box is gonna rotate this way. All right, so that's the key thing to kind of imagine that it's the pole going through that axis of the value that you're changing that's going to cause the rotation. Similarly, if you want to rotate on the Y, it means you're taking a pole straight up and down and then rotate on it. So it's kind of going sideways rotation. And a lot of students confuse these two. Uh, they think that this is an X rotation. No, this is actually a Y rotation because the pole is being put in through the object. Same thing here. Uh, this is not a Y rotation, but an X rotation because the pole is getting put through here in order to rotate uh, in this axis. As to the Z, uh, the Z would be a pole going, if you can imagine it, from you into the world. So it's going to do either a, like a clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. Again, I'm going to show you now on the actual A-frame <clears throat> project, but I wanted to show you here because it might be easier for you to envision these poles that I'm talking about when we're discussing X rotation, Y rotation, and Z rotation. So let's give it a try. So we can see here that the box is already rotated somewhat uh, in the Y axis. So let me go ahead and put it back to zero. And this is what the box would look like uh, with no rotation. So now let's look at a rotation of 45 on the x-axis. Remember, that's a, that's a pole going this way, which means it will rotate this way. So you notice it rotated and that part of the box is not going into the plane. And let's bring it back to our neutral position. And now let's rotate on the z-axis. Remembering that the z-axis is a pole that goes through the front of the object through the back. So it's going to create somewhat of a clockwork, uh, clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. So you can see here it rotated this way. Again, with practice, it, you'll be able to kind of determine you know, how you want to rotate something. And obviously you could rotate something on all three axes and create some kind of funky rotation. And let me bring this back to where it was, which was this. All right, so the last attribute I want to discuss is the idea of a dimension. Now, depending on the type of object you have, uh, it might have a height, might have a width, it might have a radius, it might have all three, uh, as you saw here, uh, as you see here with the cylinder. Well, in the cylinder, it just has the two. So if I change the radius of the sphere to, let's say, 3.25, you'll see it gets a lot bigger. The other thing you'll notice too in this example is that it, the shapes aren't mutually exclusive. They share the same space. So if an object becomes so big that it 
takes over the same space as another object, then that's what's going to happen. Uh, and as you can see here, the box is somewhat buried in the left side of the sphere and the cylinder is on the right side of the sphere. And you can even tell it's actually dipping below the, the plane as well. This actually might be beneficial if you start to create some sophisticated objects just using these basic shapes, uh, this idea that they do overlap. Let me bring this back down to, actually I'll bring it, this one. what's that, is that where it was? 1.25, might have been. Um, I mean, you can make it even smaller, do 0.25, make it a little dot. Uh, now let's take a look at, let's say the box for instance. Now notice the box doesn't have a height or a width. Most components in A-frame will have some default size if it's not specified. Same thing with color, same thing with position, same with rotation. Um, you can actually just simply put, um, matter of fact, let me demonstrate that for you. So I'm just going to add a box with nothing else to it. And the first thing you might say, well, where's the box? Remember, there's some defaults here. So the position, the default position is 0, 0, 0. Uh, so you can see here, there it is. You'll also notice that it also has a default color of white. Uh, it has some default rotation, which is 0, 0, 0. Uh, and it has the default dimensions of 1. So for this white box now, let's go ahead and make it, let's make it a little taller. So let's say a height of 4. I'm going to have to bring it back out, and there you go. So now you have a box with a height of 4, and then obviously you can also do the same thing with the width. So a couple of things to note on that in this example is the fact that objects do have default values if you don't provide them. Uh, but if you do want to change them, they're there to change, and if you're curious as to what those attributes are, you could go to the A-Frame website, click on the particular object, and if you scroll down a little bit, uh, you'll see a whole slew of different attributes that can be modified. Uh, and there, for instance, you might not see width and height here, actually height, uh, width is here, height's here, uh, but there are some other attributes that are generally available for all objects. So they're not necessarily specified in each object. Let's go back to our presentation and review what we've covered. So in this video, we discussed the various components uh, that are available to us through A-Frame, and we focused on three specific attributes, the position, rotation, and dimensions. Uh, so hopefully with using all these components together, you can start envisioning what your 3D world could look like. Enjoy.